Hello, everyone. My name is David McKimini. I'm the superintendent for the West School District. Albert Avenue School is our 69 school. District called West. I've visited Hubbard Avenue Elementary School many times before and I look forward to visiting again when the pandemic is over. I'm really pleased that I've been invited to read to a class today. Thank you very much for the invitation. I've chosen a book called Wolverine and Little Thunder, Real Fishing Story by Alan Silliboy. Alan Silliboy is a best-selling author of The Thunder Maker. It should be a great book. Let's see what happens. Wolverine and Little Thunder, an eel fishing story by Alan Silliboy. Looks like we're going to see some action here with an eel. Little Thunder's home was far away from other people. He lived alone with his father and mother, and he had no playmates. This looks like Little Thunder right here. Let's see his father and his mother. But he had a great many animal friends, and his favorite of all was Wolverine. There's Wolverine right here. Now, Wolverine was a super athlete. I'm sure many of you are very good athletes as well. He could jump from treetop to treetop and travel long distances without touching the ground. He was also a great swimmer and could hold his breath longer than anyone. You can see him here swimming few fish around as well. Wolverine was impossible to beat in a fight. Even when he was beaten and dismembered, he could reassemble himself and win the fight. Once Wolverine discovered he was indestructible, it made him all the more daring and often reckless. You can see here that Wolverine takes some big chances. As we will see, this would complicate Little Thunder's life. There's his friend, Little Thunder, and that his life gets complicated sometimes when Wolverine, who's indestructible, gets into fights. Wolverine was famous for being strong and fierce and loyal and helpful, but he was also known for being a trickster. That's why the elders of the community respected him so much. And they taught Little Thunder to respect Wolverine as well. Even though Little Thunder and Wolverine were very different, they became friends quickly. Little Thunder lived in a wigwam with his parents. It was a very orderly and comfortable home. Wolverine lived in a hole dug under a tree. His home was comfortable, but not very orderly. But Wolverine and Little Thunder had one important thing in common. Little Thunder was being groomed to take his father's place as the Thundermaker. And Wolverine was preparing to assist his friend in this role when the time came. You could see why they were really good friends. Early in the morning, Wolverine would meet Little Thunder at his wigwam, and the two would go in search of the caribou herd that was usually nearby. They became better and better at guessing where the herd had moved since they last saw it. Once they found the herd, they'd observe the caribou as they grazed 
on the long grasses, watching to see if a new calf had been born. Working as a team, Wolverine and Little Thunder would sneak up on their prey. Little Thunder would get the herd to move in Wolverine's direction. But Wolverine, being impulsive, would pounce too early and the attack would fail. When it comes to hunting, it's very important to be patient. Though they enjoyed hunting caribou, their favorite pastime was eel fishing. They fished in the summer and they fished in the winter. Eel fishing was fun and eel meat was their favorite meat of all. In Oromocto, do you suppose there are eels in the Oromocto River? I'm not sure if there are caribou in the town of Oromocto, but I'm quite sure you might find eels in the Oromocto River. In the winter, they would get a stone axe and cut through the ice. Using a very long spear, they would poke around in the mud until they speared an eel. In the summer, they used a canoe and fished all night with a torch. They would also catch eels in the fish weirs with stones on the river and would funnel the eel into a basket. So there's some good fishing tricks when fishing for eels by the looks of things. But Wolverine and Little Thunder love to spear eels best of all. One summer night, when the moon was full, they lit a torch and went out on the river. Everything was going well. They had caught a couple of eels, and Wolverine was at the front of the boat, taking a turn with the spear. See Wolverine here at the front of the boat. Look how he's using a torch because it's late at night. The moon is shining though. It looks like a full moon. Little Thunder's mind wandered. He remembered the stories his father had told him about a giant eel that lived in this river. Giant eel. An eel that was too big to catch. An eel that could turn the tables on whoever hunted it. And important stories get passed on from parents to children. As Wolverine was poking around in the mud, he felt something stir. He had woken the great eel. I have a feeling this is going to get exciting now. It rose out of the water, all 100 feet of it, with strength to match its size. The eel pulled Wolverine overboard. The fight was on. Little Thunder watched in fear from the back of the boat. But remember, Wolverine is quite a fighter, but one, a 100 foot eel, that's pretty big. Maybe go out into the hallway when you have a few moments and see what one hundred distance of 100 feet might be. As Wolverine was pulled underwater, he thought about how the giant eel could provide enough meat to get his community through the coming winter. That's how they fed uh, the community members through hunting, catches of their hunting. Fishing, of course. They landed on the lake bottom. Wolverine was an excellent diver, but now he was in the fight of his life. You can see here. The eel coiled around Wolverine, keeping him from the surface, trying to drown him. With his death grip, the eel could defeat any opponent, but Wolverine was immortal. As the two fought, the water churned and it sounded to Little Thunder as if a tornado were trying to suck up the river. It was quite a battle underwater. Little Thunder watched this contest amazed. The moonlight on the water giving it a strange beauty. 
Little Thunder was very worried about his friend and thought there was no way Wolverine could defeat the eel in his own backyard. Then suddenly the river became quiet. See here, the river is very calm now. Wolverine poked his head out of the water. Give me your rope, he said to Little Thunder. We will pull the eel to shore. But Wolverine prevailed, didn't he? They pulled at the rope, but the eel did not want to come to shore. They pulled and pulled with all their strength. They were almost ready to give up when a moose happened to buy. Little Thunder asked for his help, and the moose was glad to assist. Isn't it great when you have animals as friends? The three pulled the eel's massive body all day long and got it to shore just as the sun was starting to set. Wolverine chopped the eel's head with his stone axe, and that was the end of them. Little Thunder had cleaned the eels for his mother, Jiju, but this eel was beyond his experience, so he ran home to get her. It took three days to skin and clean the eel, but Wolverine was right. There would be enough meat for the winter. You can see here the meat from the eel. That's going to be very, very helpful to the community members throughout the winter. The eel skin was as long as a forest path. Wolverine and Little Thunder were determined that no part of the animal be wasted. After letting the skin dry in the sun for three more days, they made a canoe out of it. Isn't that great? They don't want to waste anything from their hunting or fishing. I hope you enjoyed this story. This is the story of Wolverine and Little Thunder, an eel fishing story by Alan Silliboy. Thank you very much for inviting me into your classroom. Have a great day.